The Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. In our chronicle of the passing scene, which we call the Cavalcade of America, you have heard stories of pioneers in government, in industry, in art, and in science. The kaleidoscope of events has pictured the role of the covered wagon, the advent of the railroad, the steamship, and the airplane. And woven into this ever-changing picture of American life, you have heard America's songs. Just as the songs of a country truly reflect the manners of their times, so the work of the scientist typifies the progress and advancement of a nation. The writers of our songs try to bring pleasure into the lives of the people. So also our research chemists, such as those who work in DuPont laboratories, striving to provide more comforts and conveniences, hoping to make the world a happier place in which to live. Their goal is the objective expressed in the DuPont pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. The singers you will hear on this evening's program are Gladys Rice, Mary Hopple, Alden Edkins, Charles Harrison, Wallace McGill, and Everett Clark, with Don Voorhees and the DuPont Cavalcade Orchestra. present songs of that colorful period in American history, the gay 90s. The songs of no other decade picture so vividly the tempo of their time. And because these songs were first heard in the theaters, music, and concert halls of New York, we invite you to turn back the clock with us and join a group of young people, a city pair and a country couple, as they're making their way to Broadway. Not the Broadway of today, but the Broadway of the gay 90s centered around 14th Street. The conventional way to reach the theater section is by hansom cab. But a new marvel of transportation, the 3rd Avenue Elevated Railroad, is the talk of the town. And now we find our young friends standing on a downtown platform waiting for the steam train, the predecessor of the electric train that runs on the L of today. Oh, oh, Joey, I'm so excited. This is my first ride on the new L. Isn't that the cutest engine? Well, just wait till we get on it and start whizzing past folks' upstairs windows. Oh, Charlie. The case, yes? you better put blinkers on Johnny. You country folks aren't used to such sights. Hey, you talk as if we don't have upstairs windows in the country. Johnny and I may come from the country, but we're not hasty. No. Go on, let's get aboard. Be careful of your petticoats, Kate. Don't get caught on the steps. Uh, there are some seats over there. Come on, hurry up. Over there. All right. Stop 14th Street. Stop 14th Street. Oh, golly, we're moving. Here, yeah, sit down, Johnny. Don't look out. Uh, where, where are we going first, Charlie? Kate and I want to see everything. Well, you're not going to be able to see much of anything if you really want to see something of everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that can't be helped. i got to go home tomorrow. I said I was going to see New York in one day, and I'm going to see it if it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably kill all of us. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Well, I've already seen the Brooklyn Bridge and the Statue of Liberty, Central Park. Oh, Johnny, look at those electric lights over there. Oh, yeah. Say, Charlie, do you believe what they say, that they'll have them all over New York in a few years? Yes, they're getting to be pretty popular. Oh, say, speaking of light, have you heard that new song? Oh, Charlie, you mean the one about the new electric light? Yeah, oh, yeah. One. Oh, Kate brought right. a copy of it yesterday. Let's see, it goes, um, all our ballroom beauties who look so nice at night will not seem half so charming by the new electric light. <laughs> That's it. There are some of us we'll welcome, and there's some of us we'll hate the sight of this latest, greatest wonder. That's the new electric light. <laughs> Show us so how our sweetheart to the curls so long and bright. What makes the blushes we can see by the new electric light. <laughs> Come on, folks. 
come on. Wait like that. Oh, take it easy now. Oh, First, we'll take in Tony Pastor's music hall. But we'll have to hurry if we're going to be there in time to catch Lottie Gilson. Yes, Ooh, Lottie Gilson? Yes, the little magnet. She made Annie Rooney famous, remember? Oh, yes, and they say she's singing You're Not the Only Pebble on the Beach. That's right, right that's right. Oh, oh, right. Oh, 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 come on, folks. All right, now. Careful going down these elevated steps. They're very slippery. All right, I, here, take my hand. Uh, I hear this Lottie right. Gilson's a pippin'. Oh, <laughs> she's a peach, all right, Johnny. She's a peach. Yes, but I'd rather hear Minnie Schultz any day. My goodness, this is a long flight of steps. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's shorter going down than coming up. <laughs> oh, here we are. Which way? Well, right over this way. That's it. All right, take oh, care now. Oh, no, There goes Lillian Russell in that Victoria. Oh, Gee, isn't she beautiful? Look at those clothes. Say, do you suppose those diamonds are real? Oh, sure they're real. But come on now, let's hurry up. Hey, look out for those bicycles. Oh, what do you mean by that, you darn fool? I tell you, there ought to be a law against those torches. They almost ran over me. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, kid. Are you all right? I think so. Oh, good. Oh, well, dear. here we are. <laughs> Get out your quarters, Johnny. Tony Pastor doesn't put on a free show, you know. <laughs> Show yourself. Oh, go on. Four tickets, please. Step inside and find your seat, ladies and gentlemen. The show's already started. Tickets, Come on, Johnny. You can see the pictures on the way out. Let's get in there to see the show. Come in, <laughs> Oh, we've just missed the comedian. Yes. Oh, but look. We're just in time to hear my favorite song. <laughs> A sweet tuxedo girl you see. Queen of twelve society. Just as fun as fun can be when he songs a strict duty. <laughs> I'm not too young, I'm not too old, not too timid, not too bold. Just the kind you like to hold, just the kind of sport I'm told. <laughs> I'm a blushing god of innocence. Papa says at big expense, old mates say I have no sense, but the boys declare I'm just too men. <laughs> Before my song I do conclude I want it strictly understood So fond of fun I'm never rude So not too bad oh, I'm not too good <laughs> 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 Like it. <laughs> uh. Well, folks, where to next, huh? Charlie, Charlie, let's go to Coster and Beale. Coster and Beale, it is. But Anna, Anna, isn't that a sort of a sort of a naughty place? Just a little. Naughty, but nice. Oh, <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> well, perhaps Kate would prefer the Eden Musee with the waxworks, huh? <laughs> uh, but we better take a hansom. Yes. Cab, sir, cab. Yes, the lady. Right here. Now get in, everybody. And all right, Kate. Take, you, take it easy there. All right, Johnny, after you. All right, Cabby. To Coster and Beale. Right, yeah, I sir. To Coster and Beale. Get up. Everybody out. Take it okay. All right. Here you are, Cabby. Here you are. All right. Let me help you there. There we are. All right. Now, let's go in and add a few more champagne corks to the cork room, eh? Well, what in the world is Charlie talking about, Anna? <laughs> well, they take the corks out of the champagne bottles and pin them on the walls. They have one whole room just lined with corks. And most of them are autographs. Oh, golly. Won't mm -hmm. that be something to tell the folks about when we get home? Huh, Kate? <laughs> Johnny. If you tell anybody about our having even touched champagne, I'll never forgive you. Why, it'd be, it'd be the scandal of the town. Hey, oh. come on, you two. The night's no longer young, and we've got plenty of places to go if you want to make the rounds. Come <laughs> on. The night's no longer young. That's good. Oh. 
coming out to sing. Little girls, nothing, eh, Johnny? Oh, boy. <laughs> That's one of the famous sister acts. Come on, let's find a table. Table, oh, yes, for four, please. Table. Four. Anna, you know, this is the most gorgeous place I've ever seen in all my life. I, I want to watch them sing. Nothing place in town had its singers who introduced the songs the whole nation sang. Lottie Gilson brought tears to the eyes of thousands with her rendition of the famous Little Lost Child, and Mother Was a Lady, and other favorites of the day. Minnie Schultz was her rival for popular acclaim, as was Imogene Cummer. But no trip around the town was complete without a visit to Proctor's famous Pleasure Palace. So let's join our friends as they continue their round of old New York in the gay 90s. Well, come on, let's get here. Hey, here we are. Why, listen. Oh. We're just in time for the big number. Oh. Daisy Bell. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's the bicycle song, isn't it? Yeah, that's sure. right. Everybody's singing it. Johnny, Johnny, don't you dare lose all my programs. I'm saving them to show the folks back home. Come on, let's find out these. Come on. Oh. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Yes, I am longing to share the lot of you people, Daisy Bell. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer too. I'm half crazy all for the love of you. It won't be a silent marriage. I can't afford a cabbage, but you look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. The period we call the gay 90s was the golden age of vaudeville. Dozens of music halls and variety theaters flourished along Broadway. But perhaps the greatest of these was the one that bore the name of a famous comedy team. Well, yeah. oh, well you getting tired, folks? Oh, no sorry. <laughs> what, what's next? Well, you just haven't seen New York unless you've been to Weber and Field. That's oh. right, Anna, and here we are. Let's see what we get in the bag this time. Oh, <laughs> it's it's right. Right. 
<laughs> My head is so full of tunes, I'll be humming from now to Christmas time. Uh, four tickets, please. Three dollars each. Three dollars. Three dollars? Jiminy. You'll be missing about half the show, sir. Oh, that's all right. We're just hitting the high spots. Right. Yeah, yeah, the high spots. Three dollars a seat. Johnny, you'll be sure to get a program here. Oh, yeah, his yeah, pockets yeah. are bulging with programs Tickets, now. Tickets, please. Here you are. The second aisle to the left. Thank you very much. Come on, come on, hurry up. Now. Doggone it, Charlie. I'll bet we missed the best part. Not much. We are just in time to hear Lily and Russell sing Come Down, My Evening Star. Oh. But Vaudeville and Variety Halls were not the only cradle of the songs of the 90s. The earlier presentation of the Gilbert and Sullivan operettas had brought on a wave of musical comedy. DeWolf Hopper, Digby Bell, Francis Wilson, Jefferson DeAngelis were the stars of the day. Victor Herbert was beginning to give America the nearest thing it had had to classic light opera. One of the best-remembered operettas was Reginald de Coven's Robin Hood. Let's join our friends as they take their seats at the old come Standard on. Theater. All right, come on now. Quiet, come on, please. Quiet, please. The performance is on. This is the third time this show has come back to New York, Kate. That's William McDonald as Little John, and soon Henry Clay Barnaby will come on as the Sheriff of Nottingham. Who are those others? Well, those are Robin Hood's men. And he's singing about brown October ale, Johnny. Oh, I wouldn't mind a glass of that brown October ale myself. I don't want to hear them. Oh, sorry. Oh, here's a friend to everyone. His stuff, your body calls. Oh, laugh, laugh, and laugh, laugh. We'll make you sound and hail. Through all my days, I'll sing the praise of brown October. Oh, through all my days I'll sing the 
Jesse Bartlett Davis. She's wonderful. Oh, doesn't she make a cute boy? Oh, I've heard that. It's Old Promise Me, isn't it? Yes. Do you know, they tell me that Old Promise Me wasn't in the opera originally. They put it in because Miss Davis wanted the solo in the second act. Good thing they did. It's the most popular song in the show. It certainly is. I... It can be all long and faith with you And find the hollows where those flowers grew have time to run over to Delmonico's and have a hot bird and a cold bottle. Oh, A colorful era. The days when the gay blades of old New York raced their sleighs through Central Park over the first snow to win a magnum of champagne at McComb's Tavern. When the sayings of Mr. Dooley were the talk of the country. When the Gibson girl was the ideal for the girls of the day to copy. When the stage glittered with such names as Maud Adams, Mrs. Fisk, Augustus Thomas, William Gillette. When beautiful Lillian Russell and gay Faye Templeton were the talk of the town, it was the mauve decade, the gaslight era, and its like will not be seen again. But it was a colorful and important period, 
in the onward march of the cavalcade of America. As now, one very important item in my lady's wardrobe was her perfume. And there's a legend about perfumes that goes like this. In the course of a walk along a beach, a woman sat down on a large rock to rest. When she got up, she noticed that the rock stuck to her dress. It later developed that the rock was a huge chunk of a substance called ambergris, worth its weight in gold to the makers of perfume. And, of course, she made her fortune. Whether that story is true or not, the fact remains that amber grease, which comes from the sperm whale, was essential to perfumers for centuries. It is what is known as a fixative. And a fixative does what its name implies, fixes a perfume so that its fragrance will be uniform and will last longer. Perfumers used to depend on three sources for their fixative. Amber grease from the whale, musk from the musk deer of the high Himalaya mountains in Asia, and a fatty substance derived from the snarling civet cat of northern Africa. But whales, deer, and cats are, to say the least, somewhat uncertain sources for substances essential to a large, important industry. It was logical, therefore, for the research chemist to enter the picture and go to work. Various substitutes were found. But after years of study and experiment, DuPont chemists developed a true synthetic musk containing the essential ingredient of natural musk. This product is now distributed by DuPont under the trademark Astratone. Even though it sells for $200 per pound, Astratone costs so much less than natural musk, and so little is required that it enables you to enjoy fine perfumes at a much lower cost. The development of synthetic musk is probably chemistry's most important contribution to the perfumer. But it is only one of many. Before science entered perfumery, it took 25 tons of violets to make one ounce of natural violet oil. Lilac and lily of the valley perfumes couldn't be produced at all, for crushing these delicate flowers destroys their odor. Not only has chemistry found a way of creating these odors from such raw materials as coal tar, but it has developed many entirely new ones. And where 200 fragrances existed before in the form of natural products, over a thousand are now available. So you see, the research chemist produces new and longer lasting fragrances for my lady's perfumes and cosmetics, for soaps and sprays and dozens of other household articles that we use every day. Here again, the DuPont chemist has helped make life a bit more pleasant. And in laboratories all over the country, he is continuing his efforts to provide, as DuPont expresses it, better things for better living through chemistry. Golden Touch, a story of John A. Sutter and the discovery of gold in California, will be the subject of our broadcast when next week at this same time DuPont again presents The Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 